today on Ask This Old House. Updating your kitchen doesn't have to mean a full renovation. I'll show you some options. You see all this brown in here, Eli? This is crabgrass. It's an annual that grows, sets seeds, and those seeds come back the next year. And it is aggressive. It'll smother out any seeding we do during the summer. I'll walk you through all the steps for a green, healthy lawn. And I'm headed to a high-tech shop in San Francisco that will show me some new ways to build it. The biggest concern with this machine is catching your material on fire, especially with a 400 watt laser like this. Wow, that's pretty powerful, 400 watts. Hi there, I'm Kevin O'Connor and welcome back to Ask This Old House, where if you've got yourself an old house, we'd love to hear from you. The email box is filling up. Uh, we've got a lot of them here. Richard, I've got one here for you. Yeah, I've this seen that gentleman one. would like some help with a sink installation. Okay, we got it covered. Really? I'll catch okay. you later. Good enough. All right, we are on top of it. Tommy, good morning. Yeah. One for you. People love Build It, and they would like to see you build a stool, and I'm thinking that's a pretty good idea. Yeah, yeah. Stool. I know that. Uh, well, you know, I, I've always been interested in computer driven tools, so I actually found a company in San Francisco that will build a stool with a computer. Are you guys going through the inbox without me? A computerized stool. Jen, lots of questions here, and I was thinking that this one would be a good one if to do. If it's about the lawn care email, Roger's already on it. He's on it. He's on it. Eli, I know you sent me an email about having a problem with the grass growing in your backyard, but I gotta tell you, this is a really nice backyard. Thank you. We moved in a little less than a year ago, and. We, um, when we moved in, we found that the previous owner had put in a new septic, which is great, but the grass really wasn't growing in on top of that. It was, it was muddy, rocky, and... What um, time of year was that? Well, it, it was probably in July. July? You had to pick just the worst time to try to get a lawn to grow, competing with high temperatures, drought, and crabgrass and other weeds getting in the lawn. In fact, you see all this brown in here, Eli? This is crabgrass. It's an annual that grows, sets seeds, and those seeds come back the next year. And it is aggressive. It'll smother out any seeding we do during the summer. Over here, got a little bit of broadleaf weed, which is crowding out the space a little bit. The good news is it's fall, and it's the perfect time to get a lawn in that'll come up and be strong and get even stronger in the spring and resist all of these weeds. But it's gonna involve some work to get it to that point. You ready? Yes. Let's go. Excellent. All right, Eli, this is the first tool we're gonna to use. This is a core aerator. In the front, if you look here, it has a gas engine and below that is a weighted barrel in the front to hold it down because what we're doing is driving these tines down into the ground and pull out a plug and that's going to open up the soil for the compost, seed and fertilizer we're going to be putting in to help get established lawn. Very good. So we're ready to start it up and put the tines down. First thing we do is start the engine. Make sure you have your hearing protection on. All right, now back here we have two things. We have the bar which lowers the aerators. And we're just going to take and drop it down like that. Then we engage right here, and that's the drive that's going to push this machine across. Now, if you've gone the long way, we want to turn and go perpendicular to those lines to make sure we get plenty of cores out of the whole lawn. All right, Eli, take a look at a couple of these. These are the plugs we took out of the soil, and they're a little bit heavy, a little bit clay, so we want to break that up. And to do that, we're going to use compost. This is just the greatest thing in the world. The plants love it. The grass loves it. So we're going to incorporate this into our lawn, and it's really going to make our lawn jump. Sounds great. And you want to get like a half of an inch to an inch. So 
So to level off the compost, we're just going to use the back side of the rake, working back and forth and let it spread right down into those holes in the roots of the grass. All right. Whenever we do a new lawn, we want to put down a fertilizer that's high in phosphorus. That'll make the roots grow. That's what we want this time of year. Want those roots grow and spread out and get tough for next year. You're gonna spread it according to the directions. Sounds good. Want to tackle all your home improvement projects with confidence? Join This Old House Insider, a new streaming service from This Old House, the iconic Emmy-winning series that inspired a generation of home enthusiasts. Stream over 1,000 episodes of This Old House and Ask This Old House commercial-free. Watch it all in the This Old House app and join live online Q&As with our experts. Best of all, you can try Insider free for seven days. To join, go to thisoldhousemembership.com. Now we're ready to put down the seed. Here in the Northeast, we use a blend of seed. We like to have rye, fescue, and bluegrass in that blend because when you go around your yard, you have different conditions. You have shade or sun, so we have to adapt a little bit to it. Like rye and fescue, they'll tolerate a little shade. Bluegrass wants full sun. Excellent. Roger, why is the grass seed blue? I told you we're gonna use bluegrass. I know, pretty bad, huh? <laughs> Actually, this is a coating put on the seed by the manufacturer to help hold moisture to the seed so it'll germinate better. We're going to take the seed and we're going to spread it down on the lawn using the spreaders. You go one way, I'll go the other way, and then we just got to rake it in. What you're doing now is the most important step of the whole day. If we don't keep that seed moist, it won't germinate. So I want you to water it lightly, probably once a day, and keep it moist and that'll germinate in a week or 10 days. Once it germinates, you'll want to give it a little more water. Again, just keeping it damp. After it reaches a height of three inches, I want you to cut it back to two inches, but bag it. I don't want those clippings to smother our new seedlings. Okay, will do. And thank you so much for all of your advice. It's great, and in the spring, your lawn's going to jump up and be way ahead of anyone else in the neighborhood. Sounds Pretty good for a first-time lawn owner. Excellent. I look forward to it. Thank you. You're welcome. I love a guy who loves his lawn. Yeah. So you can't say it enough, Roger. I mean, we've told the story before, but the timing of when we seed is so critical. Fall great, summer not so great. I mean, in the summer, right? I mean, we're just fighting too many things, right? The crabgrass wants to come up, the lawn wants to dry out, not good seeding. The little seedlings come up and they're tiny, fragile little things, and then you take and dry out for one day, gone. You gotta start over again. So if you do have to plant in the spring, and sometimes you just have to, yeah. what's the formula? Everything we did plus a pre-emergent crabgrass control. Crabgrass is insidious. It just comes up and smothers everything. Right. So you want to stop that. We use a chemical called 2% and it actually physically stops the crabgrass from growing up through the soil. Yeah, and not all pre-emergents are equal because some of them will stop the grass seed from coming right. up Right, well, you want so. to make sure you have one labeled for new seeding. Okay, and then um, in the past when you've done seeding, I've usually seen two pieces of heavy equipment, um, the aerator, but mm -hmm. also a dethatcher, although right. no dethatching here. No, brand new lawn, no thatch yet. Right. Two or three years down the road, we'll come in and run the dethatcher over it. Okay, and then in terms of the fertilizer, I mean, there's bags for spring, summer, fall. What's the difference? Well, when you look at the bag, there's three numbers on the back, but the first one's nitrogen, the second one's phosphorus, and the third one is potassium. Mm -hmm. Phosphorus promotes roots. That's what we want to grow. If the nitrogen number is really high, it's going to produce all top growth. That's not going to be good for the plant. You'll be cutting it twice a week. It's going to look beautiful, but with new seeds, we're really concerned about getting the roots down. Exactly. There. All right. Happy planting. The kitchen, Richard. Everyone's favorite room and their favorite room to remodel, although a complete remodel of the kitchen can be really expensive. Big bucks. So many people just want to refresh it, and they usually start with the faucet. Now, the faucet standard that we've always had has three holes, one, two, three, hot, cold, and then the middle. And this is what it looks like, and so they want to get rid of it. So you go to the home center, you see those hundreds of faucets on the wall, and many people want to pick something like this. This is mm -hmm. a, really a, a big difference, a single hole 
hot and cold this way with a pull down spray hose right here. Right. So now if you've got an existing sink though that has those three holes, most of these manufacturers make a cover plate right here that allow you to put a single hole into a three hole setup. And this thing's a work of art. It's a beautiful form, it's That's beautiful right. material. That's, That's right. a nice upgrade. As a way to pull it back down. Yep. If you do end up with the fourth hole on the existing sink, you can use it for a water filter or for a soap dispenser. Th that might have been an old spray nozzle right. or something like that right. so you could change that out. So you're looking at the faucet and you go, well what about the sink? And so the standard sink we've always used is the self-rimming, as its name describes. It makes the watertight seal right here. So the original installer would cut this laminate right here. And they don't have to be fussy about cutting it. That hole can be pretty raw. Mm -hmm. And then they put some caulking under it and they set it down. Yeah, I mean, I've always heard of uh, as sort of surface mounted as that's well, right. which kind of says that's right. what it is. And it works, but the issue with this is it doesn't let water that stands here fall back into the sink and actually can catch food stuffs right here. So a lot of people are looking for an under counter mount sink like this. Mm -hmm. It comes in all kinds of different shapes, it can be different depths, but for this it has to mount to the underside of some countertop material. So you're going to have to look at some sort of solid surfacing material, stone, uh, soapstone, granite, or marble. Right. So for that, it's going to look like this, and look at how clean that is. So now any water here comes right down here into the sink. Yep. But it isn't like you're just going to cut a piece of laminate. It has to be you know, measured perfectly, usually with a laser by a countertop company, a stone company. Sure. Then they're going to cut that hole just right. They're going to make the mounting holes right here. And, and just to be clear, we're not taking one of these top mounted sinks off and putting this underneath because that hole, we no. can't see that. If you switch from this style to this style, it's going to force you to go to some solid surface material. Right. Okay. Right? Wide range on this too. Now this is granite. Now this is this right here that might look similar, but this might be just under $50 a square foot installed. Mm -hmm. By the time you get up here, it could be over $100 per square foot installed. Right. And there's really no limit. It can keep going. It depends on where it came from on this planet and how precious it is. You can spend $1,500 to 2000 bucks on new That's counters. Right. You could spend five to $7,000. You can right. blow your budget That's on right. counters. But that would make a big statement. That's right. And everybody, everybody wants this stone look. I mean, so much so that look at this. This is <laughs> laminate. Look at how similar this is. That is pretty similar. We're going back to the Stone Age. Yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> but the laminate, so you can get it to look like stone. But you can also get it in different colors, patterns. That's right. Oh, Hundreds and hundreds of colors, and if you're going to stay with laminate. Cool. All right. We'll put a little bling back in the kitchen for short sure. dollars. I like it. Keep it clean. Thank you. Now you can watch this old house and ask this old house anytime, anywhere. Download our new app to stream full episodes to your tablet, your TV, and your phone. Binge on classic episodes, catch up on recent renovation, and get step by step help projects all around the house. Best of all, it's free. The most trusted home improvement information is now available on your Amazon Fire TV, Roku, Apple TV, iOS, and Android devices. Download the This Old House streaming app today. Today's building is pretty unique. I've come here to San Francisco, right on the bay, to a workshop that promises to give me a taste of the future of making things. Hi, Jay. How are you? Good. Welcome to San Francisco, Thank John. Thank you. Boy, this is quite an impressive place when I drove up. It's amazing. Yeah. So I understand that you have a background in architecture and furniture making. That's right. Uh, in the last four and a half years, I've spent here getting this shop up and running. Well, it's a pretty impressive shop. I see table saws like we have back in our shop, a miter saw just like we have, but you have a lot of other tools that we don't have. Yeah, so this is our wood shop. Uh, this is just one aspect of our entire facility here. We've basically got a hive of other shops in here. A lot of what we support is CNC work, um, stuff that is made digitally, so digital fabrication. We've got a whole bunch of manufacturing level industrial equipment. And what's exciting to see is a lot of that equipment is coming down in price and are accessible to a lot more people. Absolutely, a, a lot of the smaller companies are having them. They even in home garages and smaller uh, builders are using them also. Yeah. So what are we gonna be building today? Um, we're gonna be working on this stool. Oh wow, this is beautiful. Yeah, so this Metal. was designed by Matt Hutchinson, and we worked with him and did a variation of his design, adding this wood top so that we could show you a number of processes in our shop. So we could build this by hand in this workshop right here, but it would definitely take a little bit of time. <laughs> yeah, you're talking about a serious investment by hand. Yeah, absolutely. So you're going to show me a better way to do it. You got it. All right. 
So this is where it all starts. We need a 3D digital model, and Sam has built this in our software to show you all of the different components to the stool, along with the hardware, and he's mapped specific materials onto each of those components. Well, it's pretty amazing, but I really like to see it, touch it, you know, feel it, get a sense of the dimension of it all. Yeah, right, the mass and the scale. Yeah. So that's where we go to our first prototyping machine. All right. So we're going to take Sam's 3D model, yep. and Claude is going to use that for cut files on our laser cutter. Okay. This is an industrial machine used for etching in metal and glass, and we're using it for prototyping our piece of furniture today. It's pretty cool. So what's your first step here? So I took the file that we had gotten from Sam, and when I flattened it out into its part that we could cut on this piece of plywood, and we close these doors. Now, how long does it take for something like this to cut? This is about six minutes because this laser cutter is incredibly fast. Wow. So the machine starts at home, and then it starts moving to the smallest geometry and cutting that out first before it does the larger profile. Well, that makes sense. It wants to cut those little holes so the big pieces don't move. Exactly. Boy, I can't believe it really is fast, isn't it? The biggest concern with this machine is catching your material on fire, especially with a 400 watt laser like this. Wow, that's pretty powerful, 400 watts, wow. So you'll see a lot of uh, architectural offices use laser cutters to knock out really, really intricate models. Because that level of detail is no problem for these machines, they can etch, they can engrave, and they can cut all in the same material. I mean, so, it, this has a very fine cut. Very see, fine. Yeah. So now we can snap this together and check it out in real life in full material, full scale. In a matter of minutes, we have a full scale model. You got it. And if your design is all dialed in here, we can go to the next machine and start prototyping our joints. Okay, we'll lead the way. Okay, so we're looking at our full stool. And yep. the next thing we would want to figure out in this prototyping process is that we've got these joints really dialed in. You can see in the final piece, this mortise and tenon fits just perfectly. Same with those countersinks. And so when we're looking at these joints, the quickest way for us to mock those up without wasting real materials is to 3D print those. Use a so, printer, wow. Yeah, so Gabby can show us how this has worked in this stool. Yeah, so we've just 3D printed these on our FDM 3D printers. Um, the way this works is it takes a filament of plastic, heats it up, and extrudes it as a series of layers. Once you get that out of the machine, you have your final part already printed, and it's the same part that you modeled in your 3D file. Oh, I see. So this represents the top of the leg, and this represents the top right here. So that joint fits together perfect. Now, what about the hardware right here? Yeah, so that's just hardware off of the shelf, and um, we're able to put the parts together and make sure that we order the right stuff, and this joint's going to work out in the final metal version. So we're now ready to cut our final pieces for the stool out of our actual stock. Mm -hmm. So you're going to cut all these flat stock right here and the mortise and tenons. Exactly. Really? And we can do all that on the water jet. So this is a five axis water jet, which allows us to do those uh, profiles on the edges. Um, it's a high pressure stream of water that gets mixed with garnet and can cut through anything. So I think of it as almost like bead blasting or sand blasting with air, only the water replaces the air. You got it. Whoa. Very high pressure stream, um, and all the cutting happens just under the surface of the water. That way the base of the water here absorbs that high pressure stream, um, as well as keeps it the splash down while you're cutting. Well, you can see it start to tilt. You're watching the machine work in its five axis right now. So it's spinning around, cutting the counter sink for the screw head. Exactly. So that sharp angle profile is what's happening under the water. So every time the machine starts a new cut line, you'll see that spray of water come up. Oh, I see. So it has to make a hole for the water to get through first. Makes sense. Yep. Whoa, I love it. <laughs> and every cut line has a small lead in and a lead out. Because that first pierce makes a bigger hole, once the machine starts traveling, the cut line is thinner. So you want to start by piercing off of your part, and then move on and to your part and start I cutting see. the profile. Wow, that's pretty amazing. So Mary Elizabeth is pulling this off the bed of the water jet. Look at that. And what you'll see is that the profile is cut perfectly. Look at, here's the piece right here for the countersink. It saved the plug. Wow, I'm impressed. We're going to move from the metal parts now to working on the wood top. All right, this is a nice piece of walnut. 
and this has to be fit exactly to the same dimension as the outside of the top and it looks like you have cut an inlay in here also. Exactly and we're going to do all of that on our CNC router. All right, CNC router is actually a computer-driven router. That's right, computer numerically controlled. There's a tongue twister. <laughs> All right, so I see you have a piece of walnut mounted right here, so you obviously had to mill this up in the shop. Yep, we used all the traditional techniques. We joined our boards along the long edge. We ran this through the joiner and planer to dimension it. Um, we fixed it to our spoiler board here in plywood, and then we fixtured all of that to the bed of this machine so it's not going anywhere when the cutting starts. Yeah, you don't, wanna, you don't want this to move because there's gonna be a lot of cutting going on. Yeah, exactly. And Julie Kumar is gonna show us how to run this machine. All right, Julie, what have you got going here? So after I've written the CAM program, that stands for Computer Aided Manufacturing, I'm actually looking at a simulation of the program, which shows an animation of what all the different tools are going to do as they're running through the tool paths. Okay. So this is a way that I can verify that the, the end mill doesn't end up colliding with my work holding system, and the holder doesn't end up colliding with the stock. You can see here in our shop, we've got a huge variety of cutters. Everything from these eighth inch, uh, end mills to wow, look at our that. bigger roughing tools and even our face mills. It's beautiful. You can hear the pneumatics working as it grabs that tool. And now it's moving over to the material and that's the spindle starting up. So we're live and the machine can start cutting as soon as it gets to the material. Wow. So this is the first roughing pass and this, this tool is set up to hog out as much material as possible. Um, to get us down to that basic shape of the seat. I see. So how long will the whole process take to make this seat? This seat will take a couple hours. A couple of hours. And the opportunity here is not only is it repetitive, you could knock out a bunch of the same part that are all exactly the same, but you also have this really awesome opportunity for customization. All right, let's see how it is. Oh boy, look at that. Pretty impressive. So we've got all our parts off the machines and we're going to go ahead and finish them by hand. Oh yeah, okay. For everything coming off of the water jet, we've got a really sharp edge here that we need to break. And we're just going to break those with a metal file and okay. make these really hand friendly so that this is a finished piece of furniture. So we have to sand out all these fine lines made by the cutter so those all disappear. So for the wood, we're going to use some wipe-on hard oil. Okay, great. Walnut is pretty wood. Yeah, the colors in the walnut really pop out once you start getting some finish in there. Yeah, you get a couple of coats on there, it'll be really rich looking. And a great contrast with the aluminum in the stool. Oh, I agree. All right, the top's nice and dry, and we can assemble it. Awesome. Drop the inlay at the top, put a couple screws in, and line it up with the holes. All right, there you go, last screw. Let's nice. take a look. That came together. This is looking good. Nice work. It's a beautiful piece. I love that it ended with the traditional craftsmanship, you know, the hand finishing and fitting. Yeah, and with all that 3D modeling and cutting, it's really a form of modern craftsmanship. Yeah. Thanks, Tom. Thank you. Next time on Ask This Old House. Ever seen this happen? I'll show you what causes this kind of violent outburst. This house looks moving ready, right? Why I like the look of these stairs, they have some major issues. I'll tell you everything you need to know to paint a room. Okay, before you paint, I'm gonna stick the spider knife right there. This way you don't put any paint on the gem. Sounds great. Thanks for watching. This old house has got a video for just about every home improvement project. So be sure to check out the others. And if you like what you see, click on the subscribe button. Make sure that you get our newest videos right in your feed.